Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about how to set up hairs on avatars. Now this is becoming kind of a bigger trend within the like whole community where hairs are now being made in different ways rather than the kind of just standard way where you could just drag and drop any material on it and it would change the hair color. So I thought it would be worth covering how to set up different hairs and some things or different types of hairs you might run into or even if you've bought an avatar and you might be facing an issue within this video I might be able to help you. This is not showing you how to add air, hair onto an avatar nor am I showing you a dynamic bone settings for it. That is for one of my last videos which you can check out if those are your questions. We have three different hairs, hairs here today all made by Bunzu. I will leave a link in the description to each hair that I can um, and without further ado let's get into it. So we kind of have two different ways hairs are being made nowadays which is between cards and alpha maps and just the kind of standard 3D hair. So if we kind of zoom in here, this hair in the middle is the standard way hairs were made, which was through actual just 3D objects. All of this is just different 3D uh, meshes put together. Now the second way, which is a lot more common nowadays, which is was done through shining Nikki hair when people used to use that. Sims hair also uses this. And now creators are starting to make their own, which is through cards. As you can see, this hair is not 3D. It is in fact 2D. This can help with optimization. It also creates a different texture for the hair. There's a lot of reasons why creators might want to use cards over actual 3D. And you can see over here, we have uh, a mix of both. We have 3D on one place versus the scalp and the cap, which is a... 2d texture now how do we set these up in unity so assuming you have your hair on your avatar or you're adding it on in unity we see that these hairs look probably nothing like the picture now the first thing that you want to do is uh go to the gumroad page if it is a hair for cards and figure out which alpha texture it's using that means that if i go to the gumroad page for specifically this ponytail it's going to tell me that it uses the cc hair texture alpha map meaning that it's using a different creator's alpha map for its materials. So when you make it in Unity and you set it up, it's using that creators. Make sure you download that and you are using the ones required for that specific hair. If you have a normal hair like this, I suggest downloading Wet Cat's free hair textures. Again, I will leave a link in the description for that, which just has the basic hair textures and it has so many colors. And, you know, your problem is solved. Sometimes, like this specific hair here, it's a mixture of either different hair alphas that the creator has made or linked you to and the basic hair texture. So just make sure you are double checking your folders, double checking the Gumroad pages for information. Now, for the normal hair, we are going to create a Poyomi material. And for those of you who don't know how to do that, import Poyomi into your project. Right click create material then you click up here at the top right hand click standard and change it to poyomi and whatever poyomi you're using from here i recommend using cutout it's just easier and you know less problems drag and drop that material onto your hair now we have our hair here now from here we want to go to our main material so it would be the top one to be main and then you see main texture now we'll take one from the wet cat hair since this hair is 3D and uses just a basic hair textures. We'll drag and drop this purple onto it. And we have officially made our hair purple. Super easy setup, super easy, like not much to do. From there you can mess with your own settings. Now there's one other setting I always want you to remember doing when setting up hair materials. Always, 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 and you'll see why this is important. Come down to the very bottom of your settings and you'll see rendering options. Drop that down and you'll see the first one is going to say call. Where it says call, it's going to say back. Click where it says back and then turn it off. You are turning off the back face culling for this, meaning that... For example, for this hair, you see this big blank space that's actually covered when back face culling is turned off. 
it's more of blender knowledge more than unity knowledge so it's just good to do this for every single material you'll ever ever create in uh, unity with VR chat there's no reason to have it on so I recommend always turning it off now for the let's go let's go to our braids next so for our braids next what we're gonna notice here when we click on it is that we have a bunch of different materials here this is one hair four materials we have the hair scalp we have baby hairs we have these gold chains and we have the regular hair now for the regular hair, uh, it's going to be using just normal hair material because, again, it is a 3D object. So we're going to drag and drop our material onto the braids. I'm going to click it, drop the material down, drop down main, and just drop down our basic hair texture and we'll throw black onto there. So there we go. We have the basic black texture. Now what this hair has that's different from all of hairs, which was included in the files, this is why I stress you always check, is a normal map. Now a normal map is what adds texture to a object without having to sculpt it in itself. It's, it'll automatically do it for you. So we'll take this braids normal and underneath main texture, there's normal map, we'll drop it there. Most of the time it'll say this texture is not marked as a normal map click fix now on the right hand side and it'll fix. From here, if I take the normal intensity scaler, it's very, very minimal and very hard to see, but these braids will gain more texture than they would normally, which is exactly what we want to do. It'll give it more of a in-depth braid texture. Now from here, we have another material, which is the scalp or the cap. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated and this is where you're gonna really wanna pay attention here is we're gonna drop it down and we're gonna make sure it is on cutout. This is very important that you make sure your material is on cutout. Now for here, the creator gave us the braid cap texture. We're gonna drag and drop that in and that is going to change the braid cap. Now it's a little bit less obvious on this one and I'm going to quickly make a material to hide the baby hairs so I can show you why this is important. But if you see now, if I look at the edge, you can see little ridges. You can see little squiggles of just de definition and texture. If this was on an avatar, you can see the see-through area right here, which is where the scalp would show through to kind of give that illusion of braids in real life where your scalp would be showing. Now, assuming you want to change slightly how this works, if there's white lines and it's not cut out properly, or for whatever reason, it's just not sitting properly. From here, we're gonna go to alpha options, drop that down, and there is a bunch of alpha options in here. Now, I could go through the entirety of what each of these individual things do, but honestly, it is just a huge waste of time, in my opinion. Just going through and just sliding each slider to determine what it's going to do is the best way to go about this. Trust me, it'll save you so much time. You don't really need to know the specifics. So if I if I slide up the alpha cutoff, I can see that it is now revealing more of the scalp versus if I dragged it all the way down. And just start messing with these settings until you have something that you're happy with. Some settings for each individual cutout might do nothing at all which is why I say it might be a little bit of a waste of time because depending on the cutout, some of this stuff does absolutely nothing. It is completely situational to each individual texture. Wow, that was a mouthful. So now we can go all the way back over to our ponytail, which is our last one. We're gonna create another material. Gonna create a Poyomi material, drag and drop it on and then we're gonna do cut out. Now this is where back face comes in handy and is just kind of a necessity unless you want a giant bald spot. So I took a look at the creator's Gumroad page. They told me where to get the hair texture and alpha map. Alpha map being where it's going to be cut off, where it's going to be transparent versus where it's going to be opaque. Gonna drag that into the main texture and here we have the hair. Now, if I look over to the side here, there is a giant huge gap. In fact, my whole head would be showing and I'd be partially bald with a receding hairline. That's not what we want. Now, remember, we come down to rendering options, cull, turn that off. And would you look at that? It's mirroring the other side onto this side. And we no longer have a massive bald spot in the middle of our head. 
Now from here, this is a little bit more visible on what alpha options can do when changing where the cutoff is going to be. So if I come out here, you can see this transparency layer right here from where the image itself right here, as you can see, like this white place is transparent versus where the black is going to be opaque. You can see where this begins to cut off and it cuts out this little area on your hair. Now, the reason why you have to use what the creator gives you for card hair, like, oh, why can't I use this basic hair material for a card's hair? Well, if I do that, we're going to drag this one here. You can see that everything becomes very square and boxy. If I'm looking here, it's becoming just a horribly boxy and versus if I had this one, where you can notice the difference between the hairs, where the baby hair is here. If I put this on, they're now boxed because this one doesn't have a transparent background, so it doesn't know where to cut off said material. Now, there's a few reasons why Card's hair can be a little bit difficult to work with. If I look at Wet Cat's hair, you can see there is so many different colors out there versus if I use a cutout texture only some uh, creators make multitudes of colors where most just keep it black and white so coloring can be a little bit difficult if you go check out some of my other videos I show you how to change colors in a variety of different ways but it's also a problem with cut out hair another problem with cut out hair is that cut out hair 99.9% .9 of the time is not quest friendly this hair specifically uses back face culling to make it whole instead of just having it whole itself, meaning that quest shaders don't have option for back face. Therefore, you are going to have a giant bald spot regardless. Now, there could be ways around this. I do not personally make quest avatars. I don't really have plans to do that otherwise. That being said, for quest users who are looking at this video, it is not a quest friendly way to go about things. If you're wanting to go more quest friendly hairs, I recommend not using cards hairs. And there is a huge difference that you can normally tell. If I'm looking at these two side by side, you can see this one has the more fine hairline and the little wisps of hair versus this one is just a solid 3D object where it's details like these little hairs come from complete 3D objects and not dependent on the texture itself. Now that was a very confusing video for those of you who are newer to Unity. I hope that I did my best in explaining how to do this. Feel free to leave questions in the comments. I totally recommend watching this video one or two more times to kind of fully grasp what I'm talking about because it was a lot of information to take in. So take it one step at a time, take in that information. I promise you, Unity is not as hard as it looks. It just takes a little bit of learning. I hope you all have a fantastic day.